I'm Wataru Akahori. I'm presenting on behalf of my colleagues Naomi Yamashita, Jack Jameson, Momoko Nakatani, Ryo Hashimoto, and Masahiro Watanabe. This paper is entitled Impacts of the Strengths and Conformity of Social Norms on Well-being, a mixed method study among hybrid workers in Japan. Due to COVID-19, remote work has become widespread globally. Now, as the pandemic is getting under control, hybrid work is becoming more popular. Surveys show that hybrid work is preferred over working only in the office or from home. As work styles rapidly shift due to COVID-19, social norms around acceptable behaviors haven't been fully established. In this research, we investigated two types of social norms, injective and descriptive norms. Injective norms refer to beliefs that one should do something, such as believing that trash should be disposed of in a trash bin. Descriptive norms refer to beliefs that other people do something, and so I should do it too, such as believing that most other people dispose of trash in a trash bin. These norms have been connected to well-being. So, establishing new social norms for hybrid work is necessary to enhance well-being. Strong social norms can have both positive and negative impacts on well-being. While they can improve well-being by providing clear guidance and reducing uncertainty, they may also limit the flexibility and autonomy of hybrid workers, ultimately reducing their overall well-being. Another aspect of social norms that can impact well-being is conformity. Conforming to social norms can promote a sense of belonging to a group and potentially enhance well-being. However, in remote work, it may be difficult to observe others in order to conform to social norms, making it challenging to fit in. This could potentially impact well-being. To summarize, this study aims to examine the effect of social norms on employee well-being in the context of hybrid work. We used a mixed method approach in this study, combining online surveys and interviews. We conducted a screening survey, a daily survey completed over three weeks, and then a follow-up survey among 250 Japanese hybrid workers. We removed some participants who did not meet our exclusion criteria, so 212 participants were included in the final analysis. Additionally, we conducted follow-up semi-structured interviews with 20 participants. The interviews lasted approximately 60 minutes. Our regression analysis showed that employees' overall well-being was negatively associated with the strength of injective norms. That is, strong beliefs that they should work remotely or at the office at the same frequency as their colleagues. However, employees who wanted to confirm these norms had higher overall well-being. Furthermore, employees who wanted to confirm to descriptive norms, that is, they want to match the behaviors of their colleagues regarding remote work, had higher well-being on days when they worked in the office. Employees who experience strong injective norms may have lower well-being because they value the flexibility and autonomy of hybrid work. Interview participants expressed a preference for choosing where and when to work and appreciated being able to balance their work and personal lives effectively. Employees who want to conform to descriptive norms by matching the behavior of their colleagues may have higher well-being on days when they work at the office, because this allows them to avoid anxiety about being perceived as not working during remote work. When participants expressed concern about colleagues' perceptions when unable to respond to messages, while another questioned their colleagues' productivity when working remotely. Additionally, wanted to conform to injunctive norms was associated with better overall well-being. However, norms were often implicit. 
which could make them difficult to understand and follow. For example, even when there were formal systems for flexible hybrid work, some participants were concerned about what their colleagues or supervisor might think. Employees were generally dissatisfied with the ambiguous aspect of hybrid work, but took steps to address these issues, such as being mindful of what their colleagues were doing and submitting detailed reports on remote workdays. This suggests they are cooperating to adjust their office work dates and compensate for the lack of transparency associated with hybrid work. Our research found that remote workers may be viewed as not putting in enough effort when their work is not visible to colleagues, and those who want to confirm to descriptive notes have higher well-being on office working days potentially for that reason. So to improve well-being, we suggest increasing awareness among colleagues. When increasing awareness, we should exercise caution. For example, some workplaces are using monitoring and surveillance to increase awareness of remote workers' activities. But prior research has found that this kind of monitoring creates stress and reduces well-being. So there is a challenge. How can organizations increase awareness without relying on invasive monitoring, which can increase stress? One proposal we explore is creating rituals of information sharing among colleagues. Participating in rituals is associated with well-being in a variety of contexts. Since rituals contribute to shared meaning and a sense of belonging, morning meetings are a classic example of a workplace ritual. But they also have problems. We've all been in meetings that run too long or feel too stressful or spend too much time telling workers what they should do, which we found is bad for well-being. So we describe a proposal to build upon a previous lightweight tool for ritualizing reflection. Specifically, we discuss ways to share information among colleagues with minimum burden for focusing on demonstrating descriptive norms, which we found could be positive for well-being. Of course, there are more details in the paper, so please take a look. Thank you for watching.